So this video is all about gradient and finding the gradient of a line. That just means finding the steepness of a line. And this comes up quite often in the maths GCSE. And it might be that you're shown a line and you've got to work out the gradient of that line. Or it might be that you're given an equation and you've got to work out the gradient from that. Or it might be that you're given two pairs of coordinates and you've got to work out the gradient of the line that, that would join those two coordinates together. Um, I'm going to go through all of those examples today and I'm going to be using questions from the Maths Kitchen website. So I'll put a link below and you might find it useful. You can follow that link and you can go through the questions at the same time as watching the video. And then if you're happy with that, you can always practice more questions at the website. Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. These videos are quite long sometimes, so I want to make it as quick and easy for you to find just the right bit that you want. So I've put the questions with the timings on the screen there, and I've also put links to those particular points in the video in the description below. So this question is asking us to find the gradient of the line. And the way we find the gradient of any straight line is we take two points on that line, and then we find the difference in the x coordinates between those two points and then the difference in the y coordinates between those two points. So that might sound a little bit complicated. Let me show you what I mean because it's actually pretty straightforward. So you can choose any two points on the line but it makes sense to choose ones where you can easily read off what the coordinates are and where the numbers are nice and easy to deal with. So in this example I can see this point here the coordinates are 2, 1. It's easy to read off and the numbers are nice and small and easy to deal with and they're positive as well which sometimes makes things easier doesn't it. Uh, another point where I can also do that is here where the coordinates are 3, 4. Now we talk about the change in the x coordinate and the change in the y coordinate so it's a change in y over the change in x. So we, we write it as a fraction. People sometimes talk about rise over run as just another way of describing that, another way of remembering that. So the rise is the change in y, the run is the change in x. Okay, so you might find that easier to remember. Now with this specific example we're looking at the change in the x coordinate so the x coordinate goes from 2 up to 3 and then so the the change in x it's a good idea to always go to the right so when you're talking about the run the bottom part of the fraction always move to the right okay as I've shown there and then the change in the y coordinate well it started at 1 and it's gone up to 4 so you can do these pretty easily in your head. You can see that that's a change of 3 on the y coordinate and a change of 1 on the x coordinate. If you want to be really thorough, and perhaps this is more useful on harder examples, but if you wanted to be really thorough when you're showing your workings for that, you could show how you calculated that 3 and how you calculated the 1, and you'd do it like this. So we would say that the difference between the two uh, y coordinates, if we compare this one here with this one, the difference is 3 and we calculate that by doing 4 minus 1. So that's the rise over the run. Well the run, we're going to compare this one with this one and find the difference, so it's 3 minus 2. If we simplify this, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, so we end up with 3 over 1. Well, 3 over 1, that just simplifies to 3, doesn't it? So the gradient of this line is 3. So that's a, a reasonably straightforward example. And showing this, um, the, the fraction there, in a way it kind of overcomplicates it because this is pretty easy to do without that. But it's useful to know that and it's useful to understand that concept for when you get onto some slightly harder examples. So in this question, we're being asked to find the gradient of a line. But the first thing to notice about this is that it's sloping down from left to right. That tells us it's going to have a negative gradient. This is just like correlation when we talk about negative and positive correlation. When it's sloping that way, we talk about negative correlation. 
when we're dealing with the gradient of a line sloping down like this, we say it has a negative gradient. So that's the first thing to notice. It's going to have our answer must be negative. If it's not, then we've made a mistake somewhere. So we need to go back and check. So we talk about rise over run. Essentially, we're going to compare the change in the x coordinates with the change in the y coordinates. Right. So we've got rise over run. And we're going to choose two points on this line. Any two points will work, but let's choose ones that make our lives nice and easy. So ones where we can easily read off what the coordinates are and that give us nice, easy numbers. So I'm going to go for this point here, which is 3, 0. And this point here, where the coordinates are 1, 4. So rise over run. One useful thing to remember, if you always think about the run as going over to the right, okay? So this is going to be the run going over to the right. And you can see that the rise, it's not really a rise, we're coming down, aren't we? That's the negative part. Right, let's work out what that is then. So the rise has gone from, we've gone across from 1. You can see that there, that's the that coordinate. And it's going to cross to 3. Okay, that's this coordinate here. It's gone from 1 to 3. That is a change of 2, isn't it? Let's write that on there. And the rise has gone from 4 down to 0. That compares this coordinate with this coordinate. But because it's going down, we would say that that is negative 4. Negative 4. Let's look at what happens when we put that into our rise over run. So the rise is negative 4 and the run is 2. And if we simplify that, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So the gradient of this line is negative 2. So we need to find the gradient of this line, so we're going to find two points and we're going to work out the difference in the x-coordinates, the difference in the y-coordinates, and we talk about rise over run, don't we? So rise over run, rise is the change in the y-coordinates, the run is a change in the x-coordinates. So let's choose two points. And as ever, we want to choose two points where it's nice and easy to read off what the coordinates are. So let's go with, um, tell you what, let's go with this point here. That is, the coordinates are 0, 1. And then where's another good point? This is a good point here, isn't it? It really doesn't matter which two points you choose. You will always end up with the same answer. But it's just about choosing ones that make your life quite easy. So that is 4, 3. Right then. So rise over run, we're going to be talking about the change in the y coordinates. I'm going to write this one out as a fraction. I'm going to do the full workings for this. So this the run goes from there to there we talk about it as the change moving from left to right so that is the run going from there to there and then the rise is that so let's deal with the rise first well it finishes at three and it started at one that's a difference of two if we wanted to write that out fully we would say that we did three take away one okay so we took the coordinate from this point and we subtracted the coordinate from this point. And we're going to do the same to find out the rise. We're going to start with the coordinate of this point, And we're going to subtract the coordinate from this point. So we're going to do 4 minus 0. Let's simplify that. 3 minus 1 is 2. 4 minus 0, well, that's just 4. If we simplify that fraction, 2 over 4, that's the same as a half. So the gradient of this line is a half. So we need to find the gradient of this line and we're going to do the same thing we always do. We're going to choose two points where the coordinates are nice and easy to read off. I'm going to choose this point here, which is 3, 0. And this point here, where the coordinates are 0, 2. And then we're going to compare the change in the y coordinate with the change in the x coordinate, the rise over run. 
So let's work out the change in the x coordinate, the run in other words. So it's useful to move over to the right. It just makes our life a little bit easier working out that way. So we've gone from an x coordinate of 0, that one there, to an x coordinate of 3. That is clearly a change of 3. That was the run. So now let's work out the rise. The rise in this case is more of a fall, isn't it? We're coming down. So that is where the negative part comes from. Let me just make a note here actually. So that was 3 and then we come down from an y coordinate this time of 2 down to a y coordinate of 0 there. I just highlighted those. So that is clearly a difference of 2. But it's a fall. We're coming down. This line has a negative gradient so it is negative 2. So the gradient of this line is negative 2 over 3, or negative 2 thirds. So in this question we've got two points and we've got to work out the gradient of the line that would connect those two points. Now you can do this completely algebraically, but I find it useful as a little check, and just to make sure I'm not doing anything stupid, to do a quick sketch of what that line would look like. So. It just tells me whether I'm going to end up with a negative gradient or a positive gradient and you know roughly how steep it is. So I find it a useful thing to do. So I'm going to plot these two points. Super rough. I don't need to be particularly careful with this. It's just to give me a rough idea. But let's say this point here is 1, 3. That looks approximately right. And then if that's 1, the next point, 3, 9, it's going to be sort of somewhere up here. As I say, it's very rough, but it's just to give me an idea. I'll join those up. So it's going to look something like that. So it's a positive gradient and it looks reasonably steep. So when I get my answer, I can check it against that. Now, we talk, of course, about rise over run. Rise over run. So we're going to compare the x coordinates in both of those points with the y coordinates in both of those points. It might be useful just to make a note of those on the graph here. So we've got 1, 3 at 3, 9. Let's do the y coordinates first. You can see the y coordinate has gone from 3 up to 9. If we wanted to calculate that, we're going to do this coordinate 9, take away 3 to tell us that the difference is 6. So we get 9, take away 3. That tells us that this difference here is 6. Then we're going to do 3, take away 1. This 3, take away this 1 to tell us that the change in the x coordinates is 2. All right, so just to show how we're calculating that, we've got 3, take away 1. If we simplify that, then we get the 6 and the 2. 6 divided by 2, that simplifies down to 3. So the gradient of the line that passes through the points 1, 3 and 3, 9 is 3. The line A is a straight line and has a gradient of 3 and it passes through x, 2 and 4, 11 where x is a number to be determined. So we've got to work out the value of x, the x coordinate in that first pair of coordinates. Right then, um, if we think about our rise over run, change in the y coordinates over the change in the x coordinates, let's apply the, the numbers that we have to this and then we'll see where we're at with that. Okay, so we would talk about the change in the y coordinate would be 11 minus 2. Okay, I'm taking away the, the y coordinate in that first pair from the y coordinate in the second pair there to find out the difference between them. And then that would be over the change in the x coordinate. So that would be the 4 take away the x. So 4 minus x. And it tells us that the gradient is 3. So that will give us an answer of 3 when I've calculated that. So from here, really, I'm just solving an equation. It looks like a slightly complicated equation. Um, I, actually, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the full way with all our workings and a, a proper written method. And then I'm going to show you a slightly quicker way that I would probably try in this situation. I'll certainly start by trying, and if not, I'd go to the full method. Right, so the full method then. Um, let's just simplify 
a little bit to start with. So 11 minus 2 is 9. So 9 over 4 minus x is 3. What I would then do would be multiply both sides by that 4 minus x. So that will give us 9 is equal to 3 times 4 minus x. Let's move my workings over to here. Then I would expand that bracket. So I get 9 is equal to 12 minus 3x. Then I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I get minus 3 is equal to minus 3x. And then I'm going to divide by minus 3. So I just end up with one lot of x. So minus 3 divided by minus 3 is 1. So x is equal to 1. Right, x is equal to 1. I write that the other way around. Okay, that is the full um, way to do it. And that's really good to understand that and to be able to do that. But often I will just try whether I can sort of solve it using a bit of common sense. So if I go back to um, this point here, that point, I'm just sort of going to cover that up with my finger. So I've got 9 divided by something is 3. Okay, 9 over something is 3. So you can't quite see what I'm doing there, but essentially I'm covering that lot up. And I'm kind of thinking, all right, 9 over what is 3? Well, that must be 3, mustn't it? So 9 over 3 is 3. That tells me that that 4 minus x, let's rewrite that over here, shall we? So we've got 9 over 4 minus x is equal to 3. Well, this part on the bottom here must be 3 because 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 4 minus x is 3. Well, 4 minus 1 is 3. So, so yeah, x must be 1. Realistically, I would probably solve it like that. If I wanted to show all my workings, I would do it the way I've done it here in the purple. It takes a bit longer, but it's certainly a good habit to get into. Um, and, and it's good to be able to do that for the situations where you can't solve it easily like I did over here in the orange. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Gradient of a line does come up in a GCSE, so well worth practicing. And you can do that at the website. It's all free at mathskitchen.com. Uh, if you found the video helpful, it'd be really helpful for the channel if you could give it a little like or subscribe to the channel if you aren't already done so. Or tell your friends, all of that stuff. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.